be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When Jesus had left them, when Judas had left them, Jesus said, now is the Son of Man glorified and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and God will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little while longer. I give you a new commandment, love one another. As I had loved you, so you should also love one another. This is how all know the gospel. Is it possible for us to receive God's love and to love him in return in a new way? So after laying down a foundation, Jesus tells his friends that he'll only be with them for a short time. He is saying that when they've received the power of the Holy Spirit, they will be go able to go out and practice what they've seen him do. For the last three years, the disciples have been in a, a kind of a boot camp. Their basic training is almost over, although they'll need many refresher courses throughout their lives. What is Jesus asking them to do? To love one another as he loves them. And to do, do this, he gives them a series of instructions on how to do that. First, he tells them, I give you a new commandment to love one another. Pope Benedict XVI in his encyclical, God is Love, told us that love can be commanded because it has first been given. We're infinitely loved by never we can't love others. But how does God, how does Jesus love us? He loves us to the point of laying down his life for us. And because of this, the power in us, we can love others in the same way. And finally, Jesus tells us that love is the Christian's name tag. He says, this is how all will know you are my disciples if you have love for one another. In the third century, Tertullian, a prolific early Christian author, said that Romans referred to the early Christians. They often remarked, see how they love each other. This is how they recognized them as Christians. It was just not a love of good feelings. It's a love that brings us to lay down our lives for each other just as Jesus laid down his life for us. This is the great power that he gives us, and it is a great privilege. God has come to the earth and told us what he wants to fulfill us with. He has come to the earth and told us he is hoping for us to love one another as he has loved us. Today, the church invites us all to ask ourselves if we have really decided to follow Christ's new commandment. We may think that this commandment is only for people who are already saints. It isn't. We may think that this commandment is too difficult to be realistic, but if it were, would Christ have told us that we could do it? So what's holding us back? The problem is, is that we are like Charlie Brown. We're too wishy-washy. We need to make a decision. We need to decide that once and for all, we're going to follow Christ, striving to live our lives and give up our lives, and that needs to be our highest priority. He can help us. He can teach us and strengthen us and pick us up when we fall down. He can inspire us when we are discouraged, and he can do all of that through the sacraments that he has given us. But there's one thing that even God cannot do for us. He cannot make us choose our highest priority in life. Only we can do that with the help of his grace, moving our freedom from within. And today, we need to do that. We need to make a decision once and for all. 
Pope Benedict, Pope Benedict XVI in his installation homily said, if we let Christ into our lives, we lose nothing, absolutely nothing of what makes life free, beautiful, and great. Only in this friendship are the doors of life open wide. Only in this friendship is the great potential of human existence truly revealed. Only in this friendship do we experience beauty and true liberation. We all believe in this. Why else would we be here this morning? Obligation is important. But being here to live out this new commandment, to love one another, is even more important. Today, we are going to be bolstered with his very strength in Holy Communion. And we could turn that belief into a commitment, a commitment to making a first priority every day of our lives, to love one another as Christ loved us. But how does this love become practical? Our love becomes practical by doing the little things with extraordinary love. I would like to propose one specific thing that we can do to show this new commitment. We need to pray. Prayer has a unique power. It may seem ordinary, but we pray with love. Its effectiveness is extraordinary. We need to pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ. Maybe it's the person next to you. Maybe it's a person that you heard is having trouble in their marriage. Maybe you know someone that's sick, someone that's ill, someone that's dying. Someone might have lost a spouse. These are the times that we need to pray. We need to pray for our brothers and sisters because that's what Jesus commanded us to do. We could pray a rosary for them. We could go to daily mass and offer it for that person. You could make a visit to the Blessed Sacrament. It's so great that our Adoration Chapel is open. To spend time in front of Jesus. To look at him and know that he looks at us. But whatever it is, stick to it. And let that person know that you're praying for them. I think that's the most important thing, to encourage each other. To know that somebody is praying for me is just so important to me. In the Eucharist, we see how practical Christ's love was for us. He laid down his life for us in an outpouring of love. And he gives us the strength to follow his examples, to love one another as I have loved you. We need to beg Jesus and really pre present in the sacrament of the Eucharist to set our hearts on fire with love and to give us the strength to love each other as he has loved us to the end. Maybe the words of an expert in Christ-like love will help convince us of this. Mother Teresa of Calcutta had a beautiful quote. I'd like to share that with you today. She said, people are unreasonable, illogical, and self-centered. Love them anyways. If you do good, people may accuse you of selfish motives. Do good anyways. If you are successful, you may win false friends and true enemies. Succeed anyways. The good you do today may be forgotten tomorrow. Do good anyway. Honesty and transparency, transparency make you vulnerable. Be honorable, honest, and transparent anyways. What you spend years building may be destroyed overnight. Build anyway. People who want help may attack you if you help them. Help them anyway. Give the world your best you have. You may get hurt. But give the world your best anyway. Why? Because in the final analysis, all of this is between you and God. It was never between you and them anyway. Today, Jesus comes to renew his commitment to us in the Holy Eucharist. 
Let us ask him to convince us once and for all that real Christian love doesn't mean nice feelings, but rather self-giving, self-forgetting, and going out of our way to help our neighbors, just as he went out of his way to help us. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things invisible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, the God not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, who was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his, and his kingdom, kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Regina Jenny, let our reign, alleluia, qui aquem menuis deportare, alleluia, resurrexit sicut dixit, alleluia, 